Hello, what is going on guys? I am Numnexus, bringing you guys back into the moveset video analysis. Sit down, we're here talking about one of the fire starters from the Alola region, Incineroar. Now the starter Pokemon have been something very widely requested, so I'm going to be digging down into most of the starter Pokemon within this week. Uh, I also have one going up about Nihilego, I think maybe tomorrow, maybe somewhere, somewhere this week. Uh, it's one of the most interesting Ultra Beasts because it's really slept on, like everyone thinks it's ass for some reason, and I'm like, no, it's, no, it's, it's not, it's not, but with that being said though guys, of course if you're enjoying, make sure to give the video a thumbs up, and as well, you can always request uh, Pokemon that I could cover these movesets on how to use them, etc. and stuff like that down in the comment section as well If you see any movesets on here that you deem is viable by all means drop it in the comment section We can have a conversation about it But these are definitely some of the best movesets you can run on the legend himself the heel the wrestler Who is some reason not a fighting type when everything that adds up to being a fighting type fits him Incineroar we're gonna be looking at the first stats though uh, looking at the stat board distribution, so that should be the first thing on your screen. And I'm sick, so please bear with my voice. I just, I, I don't know what to do about it, I'm just sick. But, his stats are pretty decent, I'm not gonna lie. Like, they're honestly not that bad. It's like, they're well-rounded. Except when you get to the speed, that's pretty shit. Otherwise, everything is pretty well-rounded. If you look at it, he has 95 HP, 115 attack, 90 defense, 80 special attack, 90 special defense and then 60 speed so honestly you look at his HP and his attack stat and it, it's great It's great. Honestly, you know not much fire types have that good uh, HP stat I know like Typhlosion for example. It's like base 78. You know if we're gonna look at Charizard Charizard is 78 as well. Oh coincidence when they're trying to finish off Johto. I think not uh, What's up next Blaziken? Uh, Blaziken my boy Blaziken here is chilling at a whopping 80 so he has more than Blaziken, even Infernape. Infernape is sitting over 76. Uh, I guess looking more into it, we could do Embor. So I think Embor may have fucked him up. Yeah, Embor is way too. Embor is very defensive. He has 110. Let's not talk about him. And then, of course, Delphox uh, sitting at a whopping 75. So most of the fire starters have pretty, like, subpar, like, eh. You know, HP stats, and then you have a Cineroar who has the second most highest HP stat for all of the fire starters. So, the number one, that says something because fire Pokemon die to hazards very quickly, and the more HP you have, the more you survive. Uh, number two, as well, uh, he's not a fighting type. I, I know people cringe, I guess, and they get annoyed, and people bring that up a lot, but it's like, this is probably the number one reason, like the number one Pokemon they probably could have given a fighting type and they didn't give it to it. I'm not complaining, but I'm just saying, like everything fits with it. But overall, I mean, he could have been faster. He's gonna, what's gonna suck about him is the lack of speed. Like, that's gonna suck. I mean, he is pretty hard. He has good stab moves. You know, Darkest Lariat being an original stab move is very good on him. Uh, I can see him easily struggling with a lot of mons. Uh, struggling with bulky water types is going to be a huge issue with him. Things like Alma Mola and Tox effects are going to be pretty problematic for this guy. Um, as well as just, you know, what is it, bulky fire types as well. Uh, it's just going to be an issue with these bulky fire types. Okay, so like, like Arcanine and stuff like that could be somewhat of a problem because Intimidate, but I got not the world's biggest issue. I'm just, I'm just bullshitting right now, you know what I mean? But. Yeah, these things are going to be an issue for him. Bulky water types, especially, number one, are going to be the issue for him. Now, you're going to sit down and look at the showdown portion of this. And we're just going to sit down and talk. And I guess the first part that I wrote is a Choice Bandit set. You know, the first time when I looked at him, I was like, I the first thing that I saw is, you know, the first thing that I saw is just Choice Band. I saw Choice Band because he already does a, a lot of damage as it is. And I guess dishing out even more damage would be even better. I mean, it's kind of like a suicide ban because it's like, you could put all of that speed into Jolly. Like right now I have it in Adamant. You could go Jolly if you really wanted to, but that's on you. If you want for the speed, that's on you. But if you want to hit to the absolute maximum, you definitely can do this. One thing that does help him out though, struggling with bulky waters, is he gets the initiative U-turn move, which helps him just U-turn when you think a water type is going to come out, or U-turn on a water type uh, to get that nice ban damage you know and just be able to come out to something that checks a bulky water type you know top of coco's right there even if they're water ground grass not you know so it's like he doesn't need to take them on you know a lot of people have this mindset where it's like 1v1 no yes taking on something 1v1 is great but at the end of the day it's 6v6 so look at it that way you know if you can't beat this 1v1 go out to somebody that can and check it checks encounters you know you know what i mean but 
you know band set i like a lot it works out it's worked out great for me if anything uh he dishes out a lot of damage like switchins is going to be almost inevitable uh celesteela is everywhere right now same thing with toxapex and he bodies the celesteela toxapex core uh because flare buff is celesteela and obviously earthquake for toxapex as well as switchins like zirka tree and topo coco i've used them in the latter you know you know the non pokey bank way and it honestly he's honestly like devastating like he's powerful uh, another set that i have here of course uh before we move on though i guess just earthquake again like to hit those toxic especially but i guess to hit like those opposing fire types like earthquake on what is it toxic on tran you know and of course top of coco and zirka tree uh we don't even need to talk about pheromosa pheromosa dies even though it dark as lariat and just all of these i guess things you can see when to hit it on and then philibus and darkest lariat because you know best stab moves right there you definitely want to have those too uh, the next set here is an interesting one. It's a nasty plot set. Uh, this set is, again, pretty fun to run as well because his special attack isn't nowhere near as high as his physical attack, but it's definitely not something to ignore. You know, sure, it's the second lowest stat that he has, but base 80 special attack with nasty plot, like, it could be worse. You know, like, it could be worse. It could be 60 special attack. Then this set would not exist. But the fact that it's 80, it's, it's definitely work with workable. You know what I mean? Like, you can work with this could be worse um you, after the nasty plot he's dishing out a lot of damage his coverage is nice uh you have that fire blast and dark pulse stab uh so good stabs even on the special side as well as, of course those pesky steel types that you're going to be having an issue with uh like the steel types that i guess that absorb fire moves uh stuff like tran main that i'm talking about you can hit them up with the focus blast and you should be relatively okay with that um because so see the trans sometimes the things so you can just kind of mix it up and you know that's kind of on you but it's pretty self-explanatory with this set he's gonna be doing a lot of damage and now for most of the people asking for intimidate that's not released yet it's not like the next set i'm about to do here is somewhat of a support set this is where intimidate would really come to play especially defensive incinero set because special defense is fairly high mixed in with high hp so he fucked up right there. I fucked up right there. It's embarrassing. Yikes. Um, but you know, you know what I mean? Like, let me see if I fucked up there. I didn't fuck up with these guys. Okay. But it's like your special defense is pretty high. And I guess, you know, with this, you can somehow, I guess, try and face a Toxapex 1v1. Like you actually could whittle it down with Will-O-Wisp and bur body it with Earthquake. So, I mean, you know, you definitely can try. I mean, that's on you if you want to try, but he's doing damage, essentially. He's good for chipping down those fat mons. You know, like those water fat mons I was talking about, he can't really handle 1v1. You definitely can burn them and chip down a lot of residual damage off on that. He should be chill, taught to avoid recovery. Uh, taunt is very good when it comes to, I guess, uh, wall breaking as well. Or stall breaking, I should say. That's the word, stall breaking, because you're preventing them from recovering, you're preventing them from trying to whittle you down with any type of status infliction. You're preventing all this stuff from happening. You have full control with Taunt, and that's why it's such a good move. You have a, a lot of control, you know? And being a sinner or learning Taunt is definitely something that you can take advantage of, because when you Taunt something like a, like a Celesteela, or you know, like a Toxapex, I've mentioned them up a lot because they're like one of the most common bulky types that we see right now. Uh, you completely shut them down. Uh, Toxic Toxapex, what it all it's gonna do is scald you, uh, if not Venishock, and sometimes they run that if you're not poisoned already. Um, so watch out for that, definitely. You don't wanna try and take it on too long. Uh, definitely with Celesteel as well, she can't protect or leech seed, so you could definitely kill her a lot quicker. Sure, you could easily mix this up, but you could take out Darkest Lariat for something like Flamethrower if you wanted to. You know, I, I probably recommend that rather than Flare so you don't take a lot of damage. You could go Fire Blast as well, but maybe Flamethrower is a little more bulkier for a supportive set. Um, so you most definitely can do something like that. And then I guess you just get like a lower, you'd have to lower something like maybe like your defense stat since you want to have that special attack. But I mean, if you're not really dishing out for power, you could just say, fuck it, I'm the minus special attack. But honestly, I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, it, it, you could try it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but like I said, again, you can run Fairy Blitz if you want. Uh, I know he gets Fire Fang as well. So if you want to run that, by all means, it's on you. By all means, by all means, it's on you. Uh, you can even run Flame Charge if you want to get the little speed increase. Um, but it wouldn't really matter here. So again, that one's kind of on you, uh, I guess, for that part. So I like Darkest Lariat, I guess, running on that. Because I guess the things that I defeat with Fire types, with this set, I rather choose not to take them on rather than to whittle them down and prevent them from recovering and then swapping out.
If I exhale a steal, I prevent it from recovering with taunt. I whittle it down with Willowiz, and then I swap out someone respectively to take it on. You know, I mean, that's just my mindset. You definitely could put something else on it as well. Uh, we got this cool ass scarf set. It's basically the band set, but scarf. This is probably going to be the most common Incineroar set right here. Uh, when you look at Incineroar and you look at the stats, scarf is also another thing that comes to mind as well. Being really slow, base 60, uh, he's definitely going to want that scarf since you have that high attack stat, as well as a natural bulk coming along with. The HP high, the high HP stat, you're definitely gonna want to run Scarf Set. Scarf Set is great. Uh, it's a good revenge killer. If anything, if look at it as in like weaker Darmanitan. That is the best way to look at it because Darmanitan can run all these moves with Darkest Lariat, and you know, I think Darmanitan's Crunch. So I mean, it's basically weaker Darmanitan because it doesn't have the sheer force in it. It doesn't have the more widespread stats. You know, Darmanitan where they focus it in attack and speed. Rather with this one, they focused it in attack and HP <laughs> and decent defenses. So it's like he has those decent defenses coupled with that nice HP stat. It's definitely going to be something to work on. Like that's definitely going to be nice. So it's like the band set, but again, like I said, it's a scarf set. And then the last set that we have is a sub swords dance set and the two stab moves, of course. Uh, you get free plus two behind a sub when you have a Pokemon with this amount of good HP. You definitely want to utilize running a sub set with it. And, you know, being hidden behind a sub and having a Swords Dance up, you know, you can hit stupid hard with your, you know, of course, your stab moves. And, of course, when you hit that Blaze Range, Flare Blitz is doing even more damage. Now, sure, it may be crazy to run Sub and Flare Blitz, so maybe you could change this to Fire Fang. I actually would, um, you, like, because running Flare Blitz, you're doing damage to yourself, and you're fucked. You know, so I mean, you can run fire. You can run flare bliss. You can. You can easily modify this set to where I, I if you want to do a substitute set, you can run fire fang. I actually would recommend that. But you could easily remove the sub. You could run in flare blitz then, and you could change the last move to I guess something like earthquake. You know, and then you'd be chill, and definitely be chill right there. I put the 88 in speed because this way you outspeed. Or my Blaziken's here. Let me remove this. This way, the city is a good example. This way you outspeed all the base 70 mons with no speed investment. Um, most, uh, I guess, Decidueyes don't run speed investment unless they're full-out offensive. Uh, if anything, I've been seeing especially defensive set for Decidueye, which I actually have one that I've used on Wi-Fi today that I'll probably have up for you guys tomorrow. Um, but it's just, you know, most Decidueyes, I like to think, is much better, especially defensive than offensively, but it definitely can be ran offensively. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's definitely something that can work out, but... Again, he outspeed most of these 70 base speed mons. I mean, a lot of mons from Alola region are slow, and most of the things that are fast, he's not even gonna try to outspeed. Um, it, it's things like, if you wanna run the subset, I would definitely recommend this kind of build, but if you wanna run just swords and three attacks, I would just say fuck it. Like, I would just go full out max speed. You know, I would just go max speed jolly, if anything. It's basically the same scarf set, or basically the you know what I mean? You'd run Jolly Max Speed, Max Attack, and like four and like special defense or something like that. Like that's not something that I would recommend. That way that you don't have to worry then about someone's guaranteed that's speeding you above the 70. So like 75, I think so I'd speed this. So it was just be because of the subset, you know what I mean? But guys, that's gonna be it though. Thank you definitely for watching. It means a lot to me. I'm gonna have a decidua and pre-marina sets definitely out soon. Probably tomorrow I might just double upload both of those. And, um, yeah, so with that being said, thank you guys for watching. I am Numb Nexus. I'm going to get out of here. Goodbye.